and welcome back to our channel, or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Tiffany, and this is our Canadian Family Life. So you guys are probably wondering what we're up to this week. By the title of my video, it's probably got you curious. So this week, we're going to bring to you two videos. Sorry, the wind is deciding to pick up, so if you can't hear me, I do apologize. But we have decided, Chris came across this awesome channel, uh, Cowboy Kent Rollins. If you guys haven't checked him out, please do. He's got some amazing recipes on there. But he came across several of them that he would want to try. And that got him thinking, wait a minute, why don't we do a challenge? A wife versus husband challenge. So that's what you're getting. We're going to do my video on Wednesday, which is today. And then on Sunday, you'll see Chris do his video. And the twist is, is we're each taking a recipe from that gentleman, uh, Kent, Cowboy Kent Rollins, which I will link in the description below, his channel. Um, we're each going to take a recipe and we're going to do it. The twist is, hang on, we got to wait for the wind to go past. The twist is, Chris is going to do his video outside and I'm doing mine inside. So we're going to put up a, a poll. Once Chris is premiered and you've watched both of them, we're going to put up a poll and we want you guys to vote. Who did it better? Did I do it better? Did Chris do it better? Which one did you prefer better? That sort of stuff. So you can oh, we'll open the voting and I will tell everybody how the poll ended and the results in one of my future videos or a future community post or both. So stay tuned for that. But with that being said, as you can see, the weather is getting a little bit to be too much. So we're going to head inside and I'm going to show you guys what I got up to in the kitchen. So come on with me and let's head inside. As you can see, I have my chicken breasts here. I also have a tent peg mallet. That's right, I'm using a tent peg mallet. I don't have a meat mallet. And my rolling pin is way, way too, it'll break without no problems. It's, I need a new one. So I got this here. So what we're going to do, you've heard of whack a troll, right? Well, this is going to be whack a cluck. So to do this, we're going to just kind of keep them there. And we're just going to start whacking. So it's a great way to take out your, any aggressions you might have, you know? And so, so as you hear, it's rather loud. So give me a second to bang this and we will uh, be back with you guys when it's time to mix the uh, marinade. So, hey. Due to some unforeseen circumstances with wind, rain, thunder, lightning, weather in general, and a couple of other things, I'm going to be doing my video one part one day, one part the very next day, but all in one video. So just wanted to let you guys know that. So back to it. Okay, so you can see our chicken cutlets over there. I pounded them until about there about a quarter or half an inch. A little maybe a little bit more than a half an inch uh, thickness. Um, I have learned recently that that is the best way to do it for a very crispy chicken sandwich because uh, chicken breasts still do, even though they're boneless and skinless, they do still have a membrane. So this just breaks the membrane up and will allow the marinade to do what it needs to do, which is help tenderize the chicken. So that being said, now I'm gonna show you the marinade. So this marinade is pretty simple and it's probably gonna sound silly, but I have learned that again, this next ingredient, this one ingredient you see here, my pickles over here, the pickle juice, is a key to helping tenderize the meat because it has a vinegar in it and just gives it a nice little flavoring. So we also need buttermilk. So I got this lovely buttermilk here and then you'll also need some garlic powder or really any seasoning that you like, but we're big on garlic powder in this house, so that's what we're using today. So for this, we're gonna open up our buttermilk. Which side? There it is. How can you tell it's been a while since I've had one of these cartons in the house? I'm used to the ones that have the easy open with the screw top. Ooh, that sounds or smells interesting. So I've got my one cup measure. As you can see, it no longer has its handle on it. And my white measuring cup, same thing happened. Handle fell off. So. That one went into the garbage because it was plastic, but I can still use this one. So my kitchen is falling apart. Send help. Um, but we need 
uh, two cups of the buttermilk. So we're gonna do that here. We're gonna one. And I'm just realizing I probably should have shucked this first. So there's that. And then we're just gonna take some of this pickle juice and do the same thing. Measure out about a cup of pickle juice. Which was about all that ha there was in this jar of pickles. So that'll make the kids happy because they'll be able to get at the pickles now without having to worry about the juice falling out. See? Completely gone. No, there's absolutely no juice left in there. And then we're going to pour that in here. Like so. Now some of the garlic came out, but I don't think that's going to matter. The recipe the gentleman was using called for four tisps of your garlic powder, but... I don't, I'm not gonna measure. He didn't either, so. Just kinda do that, like that. And now we're just gonna kinda whisk it together. All right, so there is our marinade. So now I have to go grab a knife because I forgot my knife. Okay, back with my knife. So I put the marinade off to the side here and we're gonna take our lovely chicken breasts. And we're gonna just kinda Kind of cut them in half. All right, so now that they're cut, we're gonna, oops, a piece of chicken. Gonna pick them up and just kind of go into the marinade. You can see over here, just kind of like that. Make sure they're all covered in the marinade. You see, they're all nice in, in the marinade now. I'm just flipping them around and they're floating around in there and having some fun. I'm gonna wash my hands. I'll be right back with you in just a second. All right, I'm back. So now we're going to take this piece of paper or this piece of tinfoil that I had the stuff sitting on and we're going to use it to cover our bowl. And we're going to put this back in the fridge and we're going to let it marinate for a minimum of three hours. He recommends anywhere from five to six hours. So, but we're going to probably be closer to the, the, five or six hour mark because it's only noon here now. So I'm gonna put that in the fridge and let it marinate and I will be back with you guys when it's time to show you the rest of the recipes. Make sure to like, share and subscribe and become part of the family. Okay, it is now about seven hours later. Yes, we're a little late. And I brought the chicken, oops, out of the freezer or fridge. So it's just sitting over here doing its thing right now while well, we are going to mix the wet and dry ingredients for the batter so I've already measured out a cup and a quarter of flour the original recipe calls for two and a half cups but I don't want to be wasteful so this should do us perfectly fine and you're gonna want two tisps of the baking powder well, I don't like to measure when it comes to my other ingredients so it calls for two tisps of garlic powder I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it the recipe calls for smoked paprika. I just have paprika. So again, it calls for two tisps or teaspoons. So I'm just gonna eyeball it again. That looks good. And oops, I forgot to open my onion powder. But it also calls for two tisps of onion powder. All right. And now this is probably gonna be the one that'll shock everybody because it shocked me when I was watching his video and I read the recipe. We're gonna need, where is it? A tablespoon, you heard me, a tablespoon of powdered sugar. I know, I know, I thought the same thing when I heard him say that. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Powdered sugar, really? But that's what he said. So, there we are, everybody. The powdered sugar is in, and I am missing my whisk, so be right back. Okay, I'm back with my whisk. So, we're just going to kind of whisk that all together. And get it nice and mixed up put that off to the side there now I'm going to bring over my bowl and I have to flip the recipe so I can see what I'm doing or what I need now so for his egg solution he calls for three eggs but because again I don't want to be wasteful and I only have so many eggs in the house I'm only going to use one this time so we're gonna put one egg 
into our bowl. Oh, I forgot something in this, in the dry mixer. Shoot. Okay, hang on everybody. We'll go back to the dry mixer for one second. I forgot you need a half a cup of bake or of uh, cornstarch. I almost forgot the cornstarch. How can I almost forget that? I can't believe I did that. All right, now we can move on to the wet ingredients. So I already have my egg. It calls for, I'm gonna shake it up again. It calls for a cup of buttermilk, but since we're cutting this in half because I only have the one egg, I'm gonna measure about, there you go, half a cup should do it. Two tisps of, or teaspoons of baking powder. So grab our handy dandy whisk. Just kind of whisk it all together. All right, so now that I've got that, I'm gonna clean up a little bit. We'll be back with you in a sec. All right, everyone, so as you can see, I've got my chicken breasts, I've got my dry ingredients, and I got my wet ingredients. He also suggests using tongs or a fork to do this so you don't get dirty. You'll also notice that back here, I have a wire rack using the tin foil that was covering this because the chicken breasts are going to have to slip, sit and as he puts it slumber for about 10 minutes so everything can just stick to the chicken. So I have that all set up to catch any drippings. So that's what we're going to do. So there's our, our chicken is in here. It's all nice and marinated. But what we're going to do is we're also going to add a little bit of this to that, about a third of a cup, about that much in there. Just kind of toss it around like this because this will make the crunchy bits on on the um, outside of whoops. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up a piece of the chicken. Oops. It's not as easy as it looks with a fork, everyone. Get off the as much of the better milk. Put it in here. Get it kind of. Covered up like that, kind of like this, that, shake it off. Now you can see, I don't know if you guys can see that, all that, that'll all be crispies. Then you take it and you dunk it in here. One more time, like that, and back in here, and just kind of fluff her around and Get it nice and coated and like that. Put it back in there. And then you take it, shake off this excess of the stuff. Looks really good. Set it over on your wire rack and let it sit. And let it all get nice and marinated in. So I'll be back with you guys when it's time to go and fry them. All right, so as you can see, I've got my chicken setting off here. I've got my pot. I don't have a deep fryer, so we're going to do it this old-fashioned way with a pot. We're going to use peanut oil to do this. Now, if you have a nut allergy or someone in your family has a nut allergy, then I would just suggest finding another high-temperature oil to do the frying in. So we're just going to get it to a temperature, and then I'm going to fry these. Be back soon. So I'm going to grab my chicken, and we're going to toss it in and hope for the best. I don't want it to float, we don't want it to touch the ground, so. Alright, so some of it is falling off. I'm just hoping that it sticks. Alright everyone, there we have it. Look at that. Can you see that? Look at how nice and golden brown and cooked that is. That is perfect. So I'm gonna get the rest done, so I'll be back with you guys in just one moment. So there you go. There's the chicken all on the bun. So now all I have to do is add, Chris likes cheese on anything, so add a cheese slice. Now you can dress these up any way you want. We I have onion underneath the, the sandwich. And put the cheese on top with a nice piece of, here, I'll break it up. Yeah. Some lettuce on top like that. And there you have it. Crispy chicken sandwich. 
Okay, I have everything I'm going to need laid out here on my counter to make the onion rings. I even did some prep work for everybody and I've already got my onions, as you can see, chopped. They're nice and kind of thin and so it won't take too much to cook them, so that's awesome. Put those off to the side. As you see, I have my dry, my flour right here. So to my flour, there's a cup of flour there. To that, I need to add some baking powder, which is right there, there's my baking powder. So there is one and two teaspoons of the baking powder. And I'm just realizing I do not have all of my spices. Give me one moment. Okay, I'm back. So as you see, I've got my garlic powder. So we'll just... And there is my paprika, since I don't have any smoked. There's my normal paprika. Now the recipe calls for two tisps or teaspoons of each of the, the, the seasonings. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it. There is my onion powder. I know, silly Tiff, you're putting onion, onion in onion, or onion powder in onion rings, but hey, this is the way I want to do it, so. So there is the dry ingredients. Put off to the side. Ooh, pardon me. Is now put off to the side. So now we're gonna bring over our little container here. I know, my poor container has seen better days. But that's what we're gonna use today. So for the wet mixture, we're going to need some whole milk. So that's what I have today. It says you're going to need about a cup, but I'm not doing very many, so we're just going to kind of eyeball it here. There, that looks good. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and join the family. Next, believe it or not, we're going to need some sour cream. That's right. His recipe calls for whole milk and sour cream because it works better than buttermilk or an egg solution. So that's what we're gonna, we're following the recipe to a degree. I mean, I am putting my little flare on it as always. So there's my sour cream. So I'm gonna take a spoon and it calls for about a half a cup. So I'm just kind of gonna, again, eyeball it. Yeah, that looks like about a half a cup. Okay, gonna go stick that back in the fridge. Now this is probably gonna sound silly because it sounded silly to me too, but he swears by it. Apparently, because of the sour cream being sour, you want to add honey to this. Now I don't have any honey. I have some table syrup, so we're gonna kind of make a substitution here. So we're just gonna kinda, eh, that should do it. You don't want it to be overpoweringly sweet. And then you're just gonna wanna mix it together until it's well blended. All right, so you just want to mix it until it's smooth. So I've gotten to that consistency, so just give me a second. Okay, so now we have the wet ingredients done. We're gonna put that off to the side. And then we're gonna be using some Peiko breadcrumbs. So I put a little bit of, what was it? Uh, Parmesan cheese in there. All right, so now it's time to dive in and make these onion rings. So what you're gonna to wanna to do first is you wanna take your onion ring and you want to put it in the, like that, into the wet. Make sure it gets nice and coated. And just kind of knock it off. Put it over here into the flour solution. Do the same thing. You can see me tossing her around. With the fork. Knock off the excess. Toss her back into the wet. Flip it a couple more times. Like so. Okay. Knock off the excess, back into the dry. As you see, I'm flipping it right there. Bang off the excess again. One more time back into the wet, like so. Knock off all the excess there as well. Pick up your breadcrumbs. And we'll just kind of, hang on. Move this this way, pick up the breadcrumbs. Stick your onion ring in there and kind of just cover them in the taco crumbs, like so. Just kind of flip her around and get her all nice. And um, He sometimes says get your hands in there too and just kind of pack them down so that they're packed down on top of like this. So they pack down like so. And you pick it up 
And there you guys go. So now I'm gonna continue to do that. I'll show you guys what they look like when I'm ready to put them in the oil. Be back soon. So as you guys can see, I've got the oil all ready to go and doesn't that look great? So I'm gonna to toss them in here. I don't wanna overcrowd the oil too much, so I'm only gonna do two or three at a time and let them cook. But just look at them go. They browned really quickly in this oil because before this I didn't have a thermometer. We have since ordered one for the next video so we'll be able to get the oil to the right exact temperature. So that'll be amazing. I swear it should make a great difference. But you can see they're browning up very nicely. They're getting very, very crispy and cooking beautifully. This is an amazing recipe and so easy to do once you get into the groove and the swing of things. It's so yummy. And there you guys go. Look at how golden brown that is. Got a little darker on that first round than I wanted it to. But by the end, I had it down pat. Didn't that look yummy? I mean, after some unforeseen circumstances and some technical difficulties, I was able to bring you my cook-off meal. It wasn't exactly the way I expected to do it, but I was still able to do it, so that is amazing and so awesome, and I hope you all enjoyed watching it. Now, it was very, very yummy, and guess what? You guessed it. I have it sitting right here. So I'm going to do the chicken first because I did the chicken again today when I did the onion rings. So I have a piece cut right here. So I know I've already had it before, but you get to see the pleasure of me biting into it now, so. Mm. Mm. That is still good, even on, without a bun. It's still so good. It would work if you're trying to do something like a chicken fried steak. I think it would probably look, really, would be really good with this. But you can put this with mashed potatoes, and kind of do like just a southern fried chicken breast type thing so meal you know good home cooking with gravy and great and biscuits and stuff like that so it's very versatile and then lo and behold mm -hmm, I has my onion ring so here goes nothing let's see is this the crispiest onion ring I've ever tried before I'm very pleasantly surprised. That is really, really good. For my first attempt, not bad. Hang on, everybody. <clears throat> Got a little bit stuck in my throat. <clears throat> but yeah, that's not too bad. I love it. So, thumbs up all around. And I think everybody else did too. So, if you like this, don't forget, coming up on Sunday will be Chris's video. So, stay tuned for that. And then we will throw a poll up that you guys can vote on which video you like better. So keep that in mind when you're checking out this video. Check out Chris's coming up. And we hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, maybe give us a thumbs up. We really would appreciate it. And if you haven't yet, come join our family. We get up to a lot of yummy recipes, family fun, chaos, and just all together family togetherness. If that's the kind of content you're looking for, hit that subscribe button and come join our family. We welcome everybody, welcome everybody with open arms and open hearts. With that being said, I gotta get eating my dinner, so I'll see everybody in the next one. Bye, everybody.